Which one? So for number one, um, this is a hexagon, which I told you, which I told you yesterday is your new favorite shape. The hexagon, I can think about a little triangle right here. And I've got um, this, my six root three is like my um, vertical or my height. It's like this distance right here. This is my uh, 90, this is my 60, this is my 30. In order to go from this side to the short leg, I have to divide by root three, so I get six. And that means I get 12 for the other side. That also means that all of the side lengths are 12. I don't know what that nonsense is. And so my area for this is going to be, um, oh, I did it kind of funny, didn't I? Here, let me do it this way. Every few years, I decided to do it a little differently. 12 times, I did one half of 12 times six root three, which is gonna be 36 times six, which is the same thing as 216, okay? Same thing for the other one. Are we okay with those two? Okay, let me keep it moving. Um, I know it's kind of far away to kind of see work and see the answers. Um, I'm gonna actually zoom it in because my answers are there. Do you see them highlighted? Yes, no, maybe. Okay. All right, let me finish checking. I'll turn off the light so that there's no glare on the screen. you might just okay all right what questions do we have on three and four yeah, Maddie. How do we know when to multiply by the side and keep it? How do we know when to multiply you, multiply by the side and just keep it? Um, are you looking at three or four in particular? Like how on the hexagon we have to multiply by six at the end, but um, um, I think about how many how many shapes do I have? So in the hexagon, I always multiply six because it's easiest to just find the area of one triangle. You didn't need to do that on the triangle one because you just had one triangle, so you found the area. And then I actually think um, the squares are pretty easy, and I actually did it a little bit harder than you had to. Once you know that the side length is 36, then you could just do, instead of this nonsense for my area, I could have just said 36 times 36, and that should be the same thing as this um, 1,024. So actually, like that's harder than it has to be. I just would do that. Mm -hmm. Anything else on these uh, last two on the front page? <clears throat> Bless you. Okay, let's keep it going then. Let's go to the back side. Um, I'm going to zoom in on number five, the first part. It's um, how many vertices? I found eight. How many edges? I found 12. How many faces? I found six. Remember, especially with faces, that we can name them completely differently. So the first one I named was ABC, the top face. As long as you have the top face somewhere using some letters of A, B, C, or D, then you're fine. Same thing with edges. If I wrote AB and you wrote BA, that to me is the same edge. And then number six, you can kind of see half of number six. It says, which shapes are polyhedrons? Circle them. So I circled the first and the second one. But or the first and the third one, excuse me, but not the second one because it's a sphere. Should I keep going over to letter B or are we still looking at A? Keep going, okay. And then also number six, I circled four and five, but not number six. This next shape is also a polyhedron. We've got vertices, we've got edges, we've got faces, we've got all of that stuff. Okay. What questions do we have right now? Anything? Feeling okay on that homework? 
Can you make sure your name is on it? Can you tear it off and can you pass it forward? And also as you tear it out of your homework packet, can you look at your homework packet? The first side is what's gonna be due on Monday. That's the back side. The front side is gonna be what's due on Monday. The front side is what's due on Monday. Can I scroll where, Mary? To number which one? Third one? I did it a little bit harder than you had to on that one. It's just a square. Once you pass them forward, pass them to the middle to Michael. I'm going to get them from Michael. What did you say? Yeah. All right, homework is all with Michael. You guys, Michael, all your homeworks? Yeah. Perfect. I'm going to get started, but you can fill up your water bottle. We're going to do the next lesson. So at this part of the chapter, I combined 11.2 and 11.4 because they're similar concepts. One is about right, um, right prisms and one is about cylinders. What we're going to learn on Monday is about columns and pyramids. So a couple things to note here on why we're doing what we're doing and a few vocab words. First thing we're going to talk about is the word prism. That's going to be the shape that we're looking at here. A prism is a polyhedron, a 3D figure made of polygons, with two parallel faces, and those faces are what we call the bases. And those are congruent polygons. So when I'm looking at a prism, I know what the two bases are because those are the congruent shapes on both sides. The other faces are what we call lateral faces, and in a right prism, they will always be rectangles. So that's another hint. The prism is usually, um, or the bases are usually like the, the more fun, cool shape. The lateral faces are called the, are the rectangles. The altitude or the height of the prism is the perpendicular distance from the bases. And so if I kind of zoom in on this picture right here, um, the top and the bottom are the bases. And then the rectangles are all the sides around. So it's like this tissue box, the square on top and bottom are my bases. And then all the rectangles all around are my lateral faces, okay? And the height is just the distance from one base to the other base. It's just that vertical height. The other prism that we see here, what's the shape that's the base? What are these? Not hexagons, pentagons. So we call this a pentagonal prism. Because my bases are the pentagons, everything else is just rectangles. Yeah, prisms are named by the shape of their bases. All right, now that being said, we're talking about right prism. So everything that you assume is a right angle is a right angle. So everything that you think is 90 degrees, you can assume it's 90 degrees. Okay, so we're gonna look at this figure below and it says, what kind of figure is each base? What are these bases all? What shapes are these? Sorry, what? Hexagon, it's hexagon. Yeah, you guys had it. I don't know why we were panicking. Hexagon, what kind of figures are they? Hexagons. So that being said, would, how would we name this prison? Hexagonal prism.
What kind of figure is each lateral face? What are these shapes right here? Rectangles, good. And then it says, name a segment whose length is the height of the prism. What's one segment that represents the height of the prism? Yeah, Kyler. EK. EK? Kyler said EK. Did somebody think of something else? Yeah, Anaya? Which one? CI, very good. Basically, any of these like vertical touching one um, hexagon on top touching, touching one hexagon on bottom. Okay. We're getting kind of an idea of what's going on with these shapes. Yep. All right. Rolling down, now we're going to do some formulas. We're going to do the lateral area, the surface area, and the volume of a prism. Okay. First thing to think about lateral area. The, the lateral area is the sum of the area of its lateral faces. So basically, it's the um, area of the all the rectangles that are all around. Hmm. The easiest way to find that is by doing the perimeter of the base times the height. Lateral area is easiest. easiest found, it's like that's not what I'm looking for, but that's all right. Most easily found by doing the perimeter of the base times the height. We're gonna use the letter P and H to represent that, capital P, little h to represent them. Okay. My surface area of a prism is if I were to like, if I were to, like, to put wrapping paper around this entire tissue box, right? It's not just the lateral faces, it's also going to be the two bases. So the surface area is just the lateral area plus two times the area of one base. And remember on the step above, we found lateral area. And oftentimes I'll kind of walk you through it. I'll be like, all right, tell me what the perimeter is. Tell me what the height is. Tell me what the base is. Okay, now using that, find the lateral area. Now using that, find the surface area. And then last but not least is volume. We can think of volume as length times width times height, but in certain cases like this, I think it's a little bit area or easier to think of it as the area of the base times the height of the prism. And so in the letters that we're using here, we're gonna say big B times H. I actually might put a little highlight around this box because I'll probably be coming back to it, referencing back. This might be an important box for me. All right, we doing okay so far? Let's keep it going. We're gonna do an example with this. What are my bases in this picture? What shape are my bases? <laughs> Not squares, not rectangles, triangles. Remember that the lateral faces are always rectangles, so the special shape is my base. So my bases in this shape are the triangles. Okay. What's the height of this shape? Why is it eight inches, Marion? One of the sides of height to make it one base, the other base. Good. Remember, height does not necessarily mean from, <laughs> from the ground to up in the air. It just means from base to base. And so from base to base here is eight inches. All right, let's do the perimeter of the base. So we're going to do the perimeter of this triangle. What's the perimeter of this triangle? What is it? <laughs> What are all the sides of the triangle? Six and six, and what's this one over here? Also six, good. Because I know this is six, so that means that like its corresponding side is also six. So that means the perimeter of the base is going to be three times six or 18 inches. Try to make that a little bit better. Okay, we're gonna use the P. We're going to use the H, and then now we got to find a B because we're going to use that in a minute too. B 
B means the area of the base. So we need to find the area of that triangle. Hmm, I wonder, maybe there was a reason we did all of those triangle areas yesterday, right? All of my sides are six, which means all of my angles are 60. And when we have a 60, 60 degree triangle, 60, 60, 60 degree triangle, we drop an altitude and now it becomes a what? 30, 60, 90. What's my short side gonna be? The short side's just three. What's my long side gonna be? Three times the square root of three. And my long side is my height. So I'm gonna do one half times base times height. So area of this is gonna be one half base times height. One half of six is three. Three times three root three is nine root three inches squared. We doing okay so far? Okay, now we're gonna use these numbers to find our LA, our SA, and our B, and we just did those up top. LA is going to be P times H. Okay, I'm gonna remind myself that. I'm gonna say LA is PH, okay. What was my P here? 18, what was my H? Eight, we're just gonna do 18 times eight. One forty-four inches squared. Remember, LA stands for lateral area, so area is always squared units. We okay with that? We need to use that for our next step because for SA, we're going to do LA plus two times B. So SA is going to be LA plus two B. Well, we just found that LA, it's 144 plus two. What was our B? Not six. Nine root three was our B, our area of our base. So we're gonna do 144 plus two times nine root three. This is one of those ones that doesn't really get nice and cute and clean. It's just going to say 144 plus 18 root 3, and it's going to be inches squared. Not quite, not yet, but volume is going to be inches cubed. LA is inches squared, and then base is inches squared as well, so we're adding those two numbers together. But I like that you're a heads up because the next one is going to be inches cubed. All right, and then the last one is B, or is uh, volume B, and volume is going to be B times H. We know that B is nine root three, and we know H is eight. So I'm gonna do, um, I'm gonna type, say B times H first, just so I know what I'm doing. And I'm gonna do nine root three times H, which is eight. Remember, we can do nine times eight, which is 72, 72 root three, and then now we're at inches cubed. All right. What questions do we have so far? All right, we're gonna do one more like that, and then we're gonna do a few cylinder problems that are almost the same, just have circles instead of shapes as their bases, okay? So let's keep moving to the next one. Moving on to the back side. What are my bases here? With trapezoids. The whole shape right here is a trapezoid. Trap, trap. All right, what's my height? 
height of the whole prism? Nope. Why is it four, Tyler? Oh, you did one of these guys. Oh, it is four. Cam, why is it four? Lexi, why is it four? It's connecting my two bases. It's connecting my two bases. There we go. It's the it's the number that goes between my two bases, so it's four. Okay. Let's do perimeter of this shape. Let me draw this little trapezoid out just so we can kind of visualize what's happening. Oh, that's a terrible job. Help me. Okay, that's just gonna have to be good enough. What's the top of my trapezoid? Six. What's the bottom of my trapezoid? What are the two sides that should be um, equal, even though they don't look like it in my picture? Root five, good. So when we do perimeter, we're gonna add those all up, six plus 12 plus three root five plus three root five. What can I combine there? Six and 12, good, right, 18. And then can we combine three root five and three root five? What's that gonna be? Six root, five. Six root five. Very good. We can add the numbers outside the radical. You cannot add the numbers inside the radical. You're only allowed to add them together because they have the same number under the radical. So while that's ugly, that's my perimeter. 18 plus six root five centimeters. All right. And the last number we need to get is B. How do we find the area of this trapezoid? Who remembers the area of a trapezoid? And then times height. One half six plus twelve times three root five. Six plus twelve is eighteen, and then half of eighteen is nine. So nine times three is. 27 root five centimeters squared. Does that look good to you guys? Do you think now that we've done a height and perimeter and base, do you think you can do LA, SA, and B by yourself? Good, remind me what two things do I multiply to get LA? Perimeter. What'd you say? Perimeter. Perimeter times. Height, good. Height. Remember, SA is what plus what? LA plus 2B. And what's V? B times H. Awesome. All right, take a second. I'll put my work on the board in a second, but you look at it first. All right, I've got my SA and my LA up there. And now I'm going to do my B. What are you thinking about that? You guys feel okay?
Yeah. Give me some thumbs. Where are we at? Good, bad, medium. Got a couple good. Got a couple medium. We'll still do a few more practice. Okay, good. All right. That is all the prisms that we're going to practice right now, but cylinder is super similar. So let's get into a couple cylinder ones, okay? Cylinder, it says a solid with a congruent circular bases that are parallel. So I like to think of that as like a can or like in my, I've got like a coffee mug up here that's, that's a cylinder. I've got circles on the top and bottom, and then it's just like, um, you know, goes with it all the way around. There's no sides on this, so it's not a prism because if I like, there's no rectangle lateral sides, um, but it's still a cylinder and it's a lot like a prism. They're treated the same way. Now, the height of a similar, just like the height of a prism, is the perpendicular distance between the two bases. So again, it's not necessarily the up and down distance. It's just like, where are the two circles? What's the distance between them? The radius of the, of the cylinder is also the radius of the two cylinder bases. So I like to think about kind of breaking it apart. My base on top is a circle. My base on bottom is a circle. And then think about it. If you were to like take a can of soup, you guys eat soup out of cans sometimes or veggies out of cans. You guys know what a can is from the grocery store? I thank God. Well, if we were to take the, <laughs> thanks for laughing at me. If you were to take the label off of that can, what shape is that label? A rectangle, right? So if I were to have like this piece of paper around my coffee mug and I were to take it off, it's just a rectangle. So our lateral area looks a little bit different this time. It's also just one big rectangle. That's like the label on that soup of, um, can of soup. All right, so for every cylinder, the area of the base is the area of a circle. What is the area of a circle? Pi r squared, just pi r squared. And then the perimeter is the same thing as its circumference, which is what? Two pi or pi d. I don't care which one you use, whichever one makes you happy, you are welcome to do. Okay. Um, lateral area of a circle in the figure above, it represents the lateral area of a cylinder. Imagine a soup can, blah, blah, blah. We already talked about it. It will become a rectangle. And so the area of this unrolled rectangle is the length times the height of the rectangle. Well, the length of the rectangle is the circumference, or if it makes you happy to use the same words we've been using, perimeter of the base times the height of the cylinder, which is just like we did last time, it's P times H. If you were to go back in your notes on prisms we just did, I said LA equals PH. I love when it's consistent, right? Surface area is also the same thing. I've got my area of my two bases times the lateral surface area, so 2B plus LA. I have it in a different order than I had it earlier, but it's the same thing, right? You guys okay with that so far? Okay, so I have LA is PH, and then SA is 2B plus LA. So everything's the same so far. And then volume is the exact same thing too, but my area of a circle, remember, is pi r squared. So it also might be helpful for you to think of it as um, pi r squared times h. I don't necessarily find that helpful because we already do our, our p's and our b's and our h's, so I usually don't solve it out like that. But if it makes you happy, you can think of it like that. I, on the other hand, am going to highlight what I've been doing on the last problem and continue to keep doing that. All right. We got two more problems. That's all we've got today. Okay. You guys hanging in there with me? Am I moving too fast? No. Okay. Awesome. All right. Let's look at this. First thing I want to recognize is what's my R? What's my radius for this? Four. Good. 
Don't forget to put units with everything. And then remember we express pi as just pi in my answer. Don't multiply it through. What's the height of this cylinder? Five, very good. Five meters. All right, let's do my perimeter. My perimeter is the same thing as my circumference, which is two pi r. So I'm gonna do two times pi times four. So that's going to be eight pi meters. All right, B is for the area of my base, the area of that circle, which is pi r squared. So we're going to do pi times four squared, which is going to be 16 pi meters squared. All right, I found those things because now I'm just going to use them to plug in to find everything else. Are you guys okay so far? All right, LA. Can you guys remember what remember what LA is? What times what gives you LA? P times H. P times H. Good. So I'm going to do eight pi times five. I'm just going to leave that at forty pi meters squared. All right, let's do SA. What do we do to get SA? Good, LA plus 2B. We just found LA was 40 pi, and now we're going to do 2 times B. B was 16 pi. So 40 pi plus 32 pi is going to be 72 pi meters squared. And then last, how do I find volume? What? Base times height, B times H. So I'm gonna do five is my height times 16 pi. is 80 meters to the third. <laughs> I think you have enough power to try the next one without me. Do you guys agree? Yeah. All right, go ahead and try it. I'm going to start my work in a minute. <clears throat> Hey, sure. Oh, yeah. You're going to leave. I'm 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 going to Awesome. Thank you so and much. Then, uh, yeah, to the left. Oh, yeah. Okay. Sure. Okay. 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 Um, and then and I need to take the like Thing at the court. Okay, just all of it. And I everything that way. 
Guys, check your P, H, and B, and make sure that those are right, and then make sure that you plug in. But it's good to have this stuff just in case anything crazy. Very true. So okay. I've seen me drive. It's not really not crazy. But I don't know that right after the big one. Beautiful place. I actually think a shower there, but I don't know if you did yeah, that's all right. All right, see ya. All right, let's take a second, finish multiplying these guys out. 12 pi times 14. One sixty-eight pi plus two times thirty-six. Two forty pi centimeters square. Is that what you guys got for that one? <laughs> yes. Okay. And then the last one, B times H. And thirty-six pi times. 14 is 504 pi what you guys got for that one does that one look good all right that's it for our notes you guys have the rest of class to work on those four i think is it four problems on homework that's all that is due on monday Those of you watching your homeworks due on Monday too, email me with questions.